Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late, out of date, review. A little bit smoky in here, there, girlfriend cooking fried chicken. She burnt the tar out of one of the pieces of chicken there. Full of smoke up in this motherfucker. I can hardly breathe, god damn it. But, uh, little raw review there. Enjoyed the show, ladies and gentlemen. I enjoyed it there, so the wrestling haters, the tough guys, y'all can just leave. <laughs> right now, I guess, go watch another video there. You can throw shit at me. You're not cool anymore, man! Throw some fucking shit at me there. But, um, good show, I thought. It started with big crazy Coit Angle there. He was about to set up a match between Roman Reigns and Joe. And then Jason Jordan came out to fuck things up there. And the fucking crowd was booing the shit out of him, you know? It was good. Roman Reigns comes out. You know, Roman did a decent job on the mic. He was making fun of Jordan, shit like this. Samoa Joe comes out. Eventually, Jordan hits Reigns with like a belly to belly suplex or something like this there. And um, pretty good segment. Reigns did good. And Jason Jordan has that potential as a heel. Has some of them heel tendencies, the whole crowd booing the shit out of him there. Even Kurt Angle was giving him crap later on in the night, so... The man has potential to be a heel there. Good opening segment, I thought. First match, Roman Reigns defeated Jason Jordan for the Intercontinental title there. I thought this was a damn good match. A, a darn good match there. A hootin' tootin' of a good match there. It was good. You know, Jason Jordan might not, you know, he's not fully developed yet there, but... The man has the goods in the ring or whatever. He looks like he could be a star or whatever. So, big tangs to come from Jason Jordan down the line unless he gets released next week. You never know what can happen there, but he has a little bit of potential there. Second match, Paige defeated Sasha Banks. Little bit of interference there, but um, this was a long match. It was close to 30 minutes. I didn't time the shit there like some people do, but uh, it was a long match and it was a good match, you know what I mean? Um, at the same time, I don't want Sasha Banks to get buried either there, but it was a nice big win for Paige or whatever. Backstage, Enzo Amore is giving a pep talk to his buddies from the Zoe train there. Gives them a pep talk, sends them away or whatever. Then he turns around and Nia Jax is there. Giving him like a, a, a sexy face there. Shit like this, you know. Like if she wanted him, she she wanted to make out with him kind of deal. And uh, she's, <laughs> she's like, how you doing? Making big faces and walks away. <laughs> Enzo was like confused, but, you know, not sure what they're going to do with this. There's potential here. She could maybe be like his manager, enforcer kind of deal. And she's big enough where she could do damage to the other cruiserweights if she would attack them. You know what I'm saying? So I think 
this could work if they pull the trigger with this not sure where it's going but there's potential with this potential for comedy stuff like this there so I thought that was a good backstage segment third match Drew Gulak defeated Cedric Alexander Mustafa Ali and Tony Nice. Gulak is going to advance next week in the number one contender match for the Cruiserweight title. And this match was good, ladies and gentlemen. It was a good match. There are some big strikes, big flippity doopity moves there. Some good stuff, quality stuff, not just indie trash with no selling you know you had good selling you had the story in the match two good guys two bad guys shit like this and it was a beautiful little match there some of that cruiserweight action good cruiserweight action not just cheap throwaway trash but it was actually good Elias Samson, he, he bashed Angle backstage. Angle said he was going to get him an opponent or whatever there. Elias is playing his guitar, making fun of the crowd. It was pretty funny. Braun Strowman comes out there, so Angle sent Strowman after him. They were supposed to have a match. The match didn't start. Um, so Strowman was pretty much beating him up there. Kane appears on the Titan Tron. And next week, they're going to do Kane against Strowman one-on-one. -on -one. Would have been good if Clash of the Champions could have been a WWE pay-per-view or a Raw brand pay-per-view because... There's potential for pay-per-view matches here. Kane, Strowman, shit like this, other matches there. That should have been a fucking raw pay-per-view, you know. But whatever, we're going to get a, a big match next week on free TV. Fourth match, Asuka defeated Alicia Fox. Paige and her buddies came down. They surrounded the ring again there. Asuka left with the smile on her face or whatever the fuck they're doing there. Then the three girls, they beat up Alicia Fox. You know what? Uh, same shit that they did last week with Asuka. I know this is going to build up to something there, but... I wasn't too, too crazy about this segment. Watching Alicia Fox getting beat up, I kind of didn't like this. You know what I mean? I don't know why there. I didn't like it. Um, fifth match, Finn Balor defeated Bo Dallas. And they made Bo Dallas look strong in this match there. He was beating up Balor, stuff like this. Balor gets the win in the end there, but the announcers talked about how Bo Dallas looks strong in defeat or whatever, so. You know, hopefully they're gonna do something with Bo Dallas down the line. Maybe Dallas and Axel could fight for the tag belts a little something. I don't know there because both of those guys are entertaining. Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, they're both funny and entertaining, you know. They should do something more with these guys there. And then, ladies and gentlemen, they show Matt Hardy freaking out or having his meltdown last week they showed this then it cuts to Bray Wyatt talking and then it cuts to Hardy and then Wyatt Hardy it was like the you understand you have to watch it there to understand you know Matt Hardy 
full on broken gimmick they're calling it Woken Matt Hardy and this was just great people just great straight up the, the real gimmick the costume the hair the crazy face the voice all the crazy talk or whatever and it was straight up magnificent there Hardy and Wyatt it's perfect you know these two guys for Hardy's first feud as Woken Matt or whatever but if you didn't see this you know watch it on WWE's YouTube channel so you can see what happened there the broken gimmick or whatever is officially in WWE and it was good man like a three minute promo it's Bray and Hardy spliced together you know one each their turn talking or whatever and it was well done there Hardy was funny stuff like this the laughing and everything there it was great straight up great you know people were talking shit oh it's gonna suck or whatever we saw one segment last night and I thought it was straight up beautiful there if, pe if people want to hate it fuck them I ain't gonna hate on beautiful art like this there fuck it it was great straight up great when they were both laughing at the end and stuff there it was great I hope that they have brother Nero you know Jeff Hardy as brother Nero because Hardy did a good job with that character too with the eyes and the smile the crazy face and all of that there hit Rebby Hardy you know I want to see the fucking the dad of Rebby Hardy there Senor Benjamin the kid the little plane I want it all dog I want the whole fucking kitten caboodle there the whole fucking thing you know the piano all of it there but hopefully we'll at least get brother Nero cause that that shit it's just amazing and I'm just happy to, to finally get this shit on WWE television you know and in the main event Sheamus and Cesaro defeated Rollins and Ambrose Sheamus gets himself disqualified Kurt Angle comes out restarts the match Joe comes out he attacks Ambrose and Rollins uh, Roman comes out Sheamus in all of this fucking shit there Sheamus gets the win somehow I think he gave him a low blow one two three and then yeah Sheamus and Cesaro retain I think that's the best move they're a damn good team Sheamus and Cesaro they give us quality tag team wrestling matches there and um, in the end Joe Sheamus and Cesaro were running up the stairs there Joe getting the one up on Roman Reigns once again kind of looks like they're gonna have a three on three I guess the way it, it ended there but uh, a good tag team match there like I said recently the tag team wrestling is exciting again in WWE there and um, I thought this was a fucking good show there's nothing that I well the Asuka thing was a bit lame there but I enjoyed everything else god damn it everything was good and you know I felt bad for uh, Alicia Fox but that's just a personal thing I guess there if you don't like Alicia Fox maybe you enjoy seeing her get beat up or whatever but a damn good show I thought some good wrestling great matches shit like this intercontinental title match there a fucking big tag team main event and Woken Matt Hardy just great like I said a damn good segment 
you know, Wyatt and Hardy, they're going to do some good shit together there. So, a damn good raw, I thought, ladies and gentlemen. I know the cool thing is to bash the show. You want to impress people on here there, but, you know, fuck it. I thought the show was good, and that's what it was, people. It was good. Fuck, fuck the haters. Fuck them, dog. Damn good show. Until next time. Peace.